Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray. My God, how wonderful thou art. Thy majesty, how bright. How beautiful thy mercy seat in depths of burning light. You are so beautiful, so glorious in your holiness, so majestic in your splendor. O oh God, we worship you. We adore you. We lift our hearts before you. Come with your fire, with your sweet rain. Melt every heart. Fill us again. We wait before you. Thank you for another day. 
that has gone by, a day in which we've experienced the fresh, your presence, as your goodness and mercy surrounded us. We have known your, your presence and your preservation and your love. We don't understand why you continue to love and to be patient with us when time and time again we fail you, disappoint you, when in our li uh, living we fall far short of, of your standards, when we so often deliberately ignore you, turn a deaf ear to your voice. We take you for granted. We turn aside to satisfy our own wills. We confess that we have sinned in our thought, in our in, in the thoughts that we've entertained today, in the way in which we we have hurt others through the way in which we the insensitivity with which we have spoken the words we have used and the way in which we have used them we confess our selfish insensitive actions we're so conscious oh God that we have fallen far short of the standards you have set for us so conscious that we have been controlled so much by self and that we are very self-centered that we have ignored your presence and we have pulled away from you when you have sought to touch us we confess that we have not been what you would have us to be and oh God we ask that you would forgive us we're sorry for all that we have done we're sorry for our disobedience and our rebellion we are sorry, O oh Lord, for our failure to show love and compassion to others. We ask that you would forgive. O oh God, we come standing on your promise that if we would confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have said in your word, that the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, is able to cleanse us from all sin. You have said that you would take our sins and cast them behind your back. You would bury them in the deepest part of the sea and that you would remember them no more. Lord, we stand on your promise. We ask that you would indeed forgive and that you would renew in us right spirits and clean hearts and fill us with the desire to walk with you and to serve you. We put our lives at your disposal. And we ask that you would take these lives and fill them with your spirit and use us in your service. As we come to you this evening, O oh God, we ask that you would open our ears to hear you as you speak that you would open our hearts to receive your word, that you would open our understanding to your word and your word to our understanding. We come to you, Lord, because we need you. Hear our cry. O oh, Father, let our prayer come unto you as we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 12, verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all bird offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of Christ. Amen. Oh, 
Lord our God, open our eyes that we may see the wonderful things that are in your word. Open our ears that we may hear you as you speak, and open the ears of our hearts to receive and to respond to your word of truth. Open our understanding to your word and 
your word to our understanding. So we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus had come into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Crowds of people welcomed him, proclaiming, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The next day, he went to the temple, and he drove out the traders and the money changers, saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves? The religious and political leaders were offended and felt threatened by him. They wanted to find a way to trap and to get rid of him. The Pharisees asked questions about paying taxes. The Sadducees questioned him about the resurrection. A scribe, whether in an attempt to trap him or in a genuine interest, asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. His answer was nothing new. In the Jewish writings from the Old Testament, these two commandments summarize the whole law. Every Jew knew these words, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. They were, were recited every morning, every evening. They were taught to the children. They were recited at the moment of death. Then Jesus continued, the second is you should love your neighbor as yourself. This was also quoted in the law in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. The Jewish idea of responsibility when it, is, when it comes to whom you should love went like this. First and foremost, love God. This is compulsory. And then love for everyone else was graded. There were those people to whom it was a responsibility to love. Then there were those who were an outer circle who were to be loved less. And then there were those who were completely outside of the circle to whom there was no love owed at all. They did not deserve to be loved. The Pharisees established laws to help people and told them who they should love and who they should ignore. But Jesus gave an interpretation of the traditional view, a new interpretation. To love God was clear. But to say in the same breath, to love any other person, would put the two, God and the other person, on an equal footing. One was not greater than the other. But Jesus was saying, to love God was to love your neighbor. And to truly love your neighbor was to love God. Jesus was saying to all, everyone, we must love, even our enemies. Love your enemy. Pray for them that despitefully use you. But then this does not come naturally. This is possible only to, if we experience in a very real way the love of God that God has for us, that he loves us completely and unconditionally. Even when we are considered his enemies because of our sin, the love of God and the love of neighbor are inseparable. We can't claim to love God if we don't love our neighbor. The Bible asks, how can you love God whom you cannot see? yet not love your neighbor whom you can see. Someone wrote, the entire law can be boiled down to two simple commands, 
love God with all your whole, your whole being and, and love you, whomever God puts next to you as you love yourself. But what does Jesus mean here by love? When we try to describe love, it isn't easy. Have you ever tried to describe to somebody the beauty of a sunset? Have you been able to capture that in words? To try to describe love and to define love is like that. Difficult to capture it in words. What the Bible means is that to love and keep on loving is equal to commitment. It does not necessarily mean that we feel affection, but it means a commitment on our part that takes the needs of others seriously. Just as God committed himself to take our needs seriously by sending his only son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save a lost world. Commitment is a deliberate act of the will. To love means deliberately turning towards another person to give to of ourselves without thinking about what we will get in return. It means putting others first. If we could only really love like that perfectly, the world would be a much better place. There would be no more sin in the world. If we could be really committed to others, there would be no more violence. There would be no more war. We would always say and do what is gentle and kind and caring. Love like this brought Jesus into the world. He showed true love. He touched the dumb and the deaf and the blind, the diseased and the disabled, and he made them whole. His love told of a shepherd leaving 99 sheep so that he could go and look for the one lost sheep. It told of a father rushing to embrace a lost son who had been rebellious and giving him a kiss of welcome, welcoming him back home. His love accepted torture when he was scourged and his flesh was torn from his body. It carried a cross to which he would be nailed and on which he would die. Because of this and through this, through his love, we have been forgiven and given a place in God's family. Now because of Jesus, we have been given a gift of eternal life. Now we don't have to love. We get to be channels of love. We don't love to get God's favor. We already have it in Christ. We don't love that God will love us. We do because he first loved us. One hymn writer wrote, I found a friend Oh, what a friend. He loved me ere I knew him. Jesus came to teach us to love with a love like his. Oh, that we could love as he loved, unconditionally. A love that looks beyond the failure and the faults of others and sees a soul that is precious in the sight of God a love that would cry out from our hearts to God to teach us how to love, that we could pray, as one another hymn writer wrote, and I'd like to read that, that, that prayer for you, and I'd like to invite you as you listen, to listen carefully, and to allow that prayer to echo in your heart. Oh, to be like thee, Blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit 
all of life's treasures, Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. O oh, to be like thee, O oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. O oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving, tender, and kind, helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, seeking the wandering sinner to find. O oh, to be like thee, lowly in spirit, holy and harmless, patient and brave, meekly enduring cruel reproaches, willing to suffer, others to save. O oh, to be like thee, Lord, I am coming now to receive the anointing divine. All that I am and have, I am bringing. Lord, from this moment, all shall be thine. O oh, to be like thee, while I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple meet for thy dwelling. Fill me with life and he from heaven above. O oh, to be like thee, O oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy fullness, come in thy sweetness, stamp thine own image deep on my heart. Dear Lord Jesus, come to our hearts. We make room for you. We hear you. Teach us how to love like you loved. Amen. I am loved, I am loved, I can risk loving you for the Yeah. 
forgiven, I repeat, I'm forgiven, clean before my Lord, I freely stand, forgiven, I can dare forgive my brother. And I reach out to take your hand. I am love. I am love. I can risk loving for the one who knows me best, loves me more. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.